Well, howdy, 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 everybody. Teresa here. Just me and the critters. It is um, December 17th, 2019. It is Tuesday at 4.32 p.m. And I thought, I better come on here and make my video and shock y'all that I did videos, you know, two days in a row, which I know is very nice. I'm having a good day. Um, just been kind of piddling around the house some. Um, I mean, I should be getting a lot more stuff done than I am, but I'm getting it. Uh, what am I doing? I am doing laundry, and I just got done coming in from outside. It's kind of raining, drizzling right now. Um, and I was putting up the inflatable that Carol got me. I have to show you guys a picture of it. Let's do a weather real quick. Right now, it is 65 degrees. Feels like 65. The high will be 67. The low will be 37. <laughs> it's raining, like I said, been raining most of the day. Been thundering, but now it's it stopped thundering, so the dogs are calmer. Poor things. 50% chance of rain. Humidity is at 92%. Uh, wind is six miles per hour from the west. Sunrise was at 7:27 a.m. Sunset will be here at 5:40 p.m. And let's see what tomorrow will be. 54 will be the high. The low will be 33, but it'll be sunny. So that'll be good. Um, let me show you a picture of my beautiful inflatable that my friend Carol got me. You guys can see that. Yes, we live in a trailer. See that? And a garden hole and everything. There's my little head of a gingerbread man. There's one of my flags you can see that's got Santa Claus in shorts and rain and the reindeer is is uh all decked out too um and there's another flag behind it that has snowman on it says merry christmas um but yeah that's my snowman that carol got me isn't it beautiful i think next year he's gonna need a missus so i'm gonna have to keep an eye at maybe after christmas to see if, if they have one on sale that goes with him um well, i'm gonna show you guys something else was I? I don't know. Uh, oh, I'm going to show you guys my Christmas tree that my husband got me years ago. I was telling you guys about it. It's just a glass one. And the colors change right there. It happened to be on blue. But um, I love it. Yep, I love it. So, I guess that's about all I have to show you guys right there. Uh, what have I been doing today? Like I said, just been... Doing laundry, picking up the house, um, doing that inflatable, just kind of taking it easy. I have been so incredibly tired lately. So was Brad. In fact, we were so tired last night that he came home, and he had already told me earlier in the day he just hardly keep his eyes open. And see, he takes no dose. I can't take no dose. It'll put me to sleep. So um, when he got home, I said, you know, I am so tired. And I said, why don't we just you know, cook some dinner and just go back in the bedroom, eat our dinner, dinner picnic style and call it good. I said, I'm done adulting for the day. And he said he was too. So we just heated up some um, fish fillets and uh, um, had cucumbers and um, tomatoes with it and cottage cheese. There's three things you can pretty much count. Well, four things. You can pretty much count on me doing every day. I don't know why I'm doing that. Um, I will be having coffee, and I will be having iced coffee. Um, of course, I'll be drinking a lot of water all day long, because I, I just do anymore. Um, yeah, I drink, oh, geez, at least 120 ounces of just water every day. Um, but that's what's keeping my kidneys good. And I'll tell you more about that whole freak thing there. Um I'm going to eat cottage cheese every day. I'm on a cottage cheese kick again. I'm going to eat cucumbers every day. And I'm going to eat tomatoes every day. Usually those three last things together. So I want my cucumbers cut in spears. And then my tomatoes in wedges. And then cucumbers. And like for lunch I had some of the, you know, the imitation crab. I like it when they have them kind of in like legs. Or, you know, just tubes. Um. So I had some of that, and I cut cheese, and I had tomatoes. I didn't do the cucumber because we only have one left, and I want to cut it up for tonight. So um, I've been snacking on that, 
a lot more. We got off the candy kick. Yay! That was a hard one. And you know, one of the things I did is uh, getting an Italian again. Uh, have you noticed that all of a sudden the Italian uh, come in? Uh, but what I did uh, <laughs> is my late mother-in-law taught me. She'd always battled her weight also. And she had gone to Weight Watchers off and on. But one of the things is, you know, sometimes, she, like all of us, she'd lose quite a bit. And then sometimes she'd put it back on or sometimes she'd lose part and stuff. You know, that struggle. But what she did was she would get a bag of um, chocolate chips. And then she would just get her a little measuring cup, like a fourth cup, and then have that and then just slowly. And, you know, that works. And because, um, like, I mean, you can get the dark chocolate or the semi-sweet or the milk, you know. So, um, you know, I'll have just a few of those. I'd rather have just a few of those. And um, But we got off of eating the Whoppers and the Milk Duds and the Butterfingers and all of that. And in doing that and doing less with less carbs and the sugar and stuff, we're eating less all the way around, which is super. Super, super duper. So, um, you know, that's good. And I think that's helping with the bladder infections and the infections because I know that, you know, my doctor said, and I know that's true, that, you know, bacteria loves sugar. Stop it. Just like the cancer loves sugar. Hang on just a second. I got to see what he... I was checking to make sure that my gingerbread man hadn't, like, popped or something because I didn't realize you're just supposed to leave them. Okay, the first time I, I plugged it in because Brad didn't really feel like plugging it in last night. He just, he was he was in a lot of pain, what it was. Um, so I said, okay, you know, I'll get it tomorrow. I said, you think I can do it? And he's like, oh, yeah, you can do it. Well, I didn't know because I never messed with one before. And uh, so I plugged it in in here and inflated it. Because I thought you inflated it and then just, I thought it was almost like you inflated a balloon. So I thought you inflated it and then, you know, unplugged it and it stayed and, and then you uh, took it outside. Well, yeah, I found out the minute that I unplugged it, it started deflating. So then I decided to read the instructions. I read the instructions, took it outside, did it, did the stakes and everything. Um, and you just leave it plugged in. So, yeah, I'm excited. But it's it's fine out there. Um, so yeah, once we got off of that, my infections have gotten a lot better. They're almost completely cleared up on the leg and, and, and there's no UTI. I also did buy some testing strips so that I can test at home my own urine to see if I have, um, an infection or not. And that's really nice because I can tell right away. And let me say, this is the whole fiasco with the doctor, Okay. I hate it that my doctor likes to schedule us for stuff and not tell us. Or tell us afterward. Because she scheduled us for diabetic um, classes that were going to be on a Monday at 6.30. Didn't bother to ask us. Well, you know, my husband works till after 6. You know, um, and... He works up in Tallahassee. The classes happen to be the opposite direction. There's no way we could make those. And I, you know, I don't have a vehicle. Then, so I tell her this, right? When we're in the next office visit. And she says, she doesn't say anything. Then we get a thing that she, now she wants me to take diabetic classes, uh, nutrition classes with her nurse down there like every week doesn't ask me or anything and I think okay still have no vehicle still has the same issue of what my husband's hours works and I know this isn't the doctor's problem at all right but she works for a clinic of where most people don't drive so I talk with her or I haven't talked with her I think her nurse called a couple times, but I haven't been able to get into my voicemail at all. My phone's being weird again, and it now you can't get into the voicemail. People can leave voicemails, but I just can't get into it. I'm going to have to have Brad call and work on that. Uh, so, 
in the meantime, I'm thinking about it. And when they tested, and I read up on it, and see, I was taking Azo all the time, right? Not now. I haven't in almost a month. But the day that they tested, and I didn't know they were going to test, I had taken Azo the night before and that morning. And so, of course, you know, the urine looked very orange. And, of course, it will affect how it how the, the stick, they just use a stick to, to uh, you know, a dip stick to use to test. And, of course, I read up that Azo can alter or Azo type, you know, the generic can alter the test results. Well, so, you know, she's going on about there's way too much creatine and there's way too much leukocytes and my kidney and um, have, have reduced in function. And I thought, well, how does she know that my kidneys have, have you know, are malfunctioning and, and they're not functioning as high when she's never done any other test on my kidney? And she didn't do a special test. It's just she's assuming because of what this dipstick read. Because she didn't take any special blood work for it. You know, it was just a standard blood work. She didn't send me to a urologist. You know, it's, sadly, she's gotten to the point where she was great when she started at the clinic. And I'm going to say, a lot of it is out of her control because... This clinic is run by the government. Um, most of your people that go there are uh, poverty level, very low income. There's some people like us who are sometimes we've been low income and sometimes we're not, you know, but we stick there. And there's other people like that too. Um, but she was great. But now the gut, she's kind of falling like the, all the other doctors where they just are assuming that all of us are just this certain way. And it's like, why would you even assume that, though, if they are, if your uh, patient is low income or poverty level? Not all of them are the same. Or, you know, like I said, we've all been there, or most of us. So, you know, it's like you didn't send me to a urologist. You, you're just an assumption, and... It's like you're not happy with my A1C, even though it had come down by over two and a half points. So I'm just kind of like, you know, blankety blank you. You know, she had me very upset. Like, I know that diabetes can be very hard on the kidneys. And, you know, I know there for a long time I was having a lot of problems with UTIs. But I really stepped up my game on that with drinking, like, a ton of water. I mean, a ton. And, uh, you know, I just don't understand why she would just go and assume and then not talk to me about it. That's all I ever heard from her. She never, ever sat down and talked to me about my test results. Now, Brad got a letter saying his, his, all his test results were in normal parameters. I read my test results in my patient portal, and besides the creatines and the leukocytes, everything was good. So, you know, she's got to give a person a chance. I mean, you know, I'm trying to talk to her about the anxiety, and she knows that, you know, we were going through some stuff with uh, Brad's mom passing away and, and uh, everything, but... Who knows, right? We'll get it sorted out, or I'll change doctors, you know. Other than that, I'm feeling good. Like I said, I'm not having to take even any azo or anything. Um, the only thing is, is, do you guys see this right here? This is the bug bite, y'all. And you see, it's not raised up today. Look, it's not really raised up. Oh, there's still a hard bump right here. Um... I didn't know what it was because there's a really hard bump underneath. But isn't that something? It is not near as red today as it was yesterday. Last night it hurt. I don't know what I got bit by. What kind of spider or whatever. You know. But um, that's the kind of reaction I have. So I'm just leaving it be. It's reduced down quite a bit. So, you know. Fun, fun. Um, 
Get back to making some hats. When on month 33, which is Colorado. Now we got January 1st. So I'm making primarily little hats right now because that's what I had left basically after we shipped to Indiana. So I'm going to have to find an organization just like a, a children's organization. And, um, you know, not that this video is made for children or anything. I didn't hesitate even saying that. Okay, a younger person, okay? Hey, you shouldn't have to be afraid of whatever you're going to say. It's just I want to help else. You know, <laughs> was a younger person maybe going through chemo or maybe going through something else where they lost their hair or something. Or maybe they just have real thin hair and a real, you know, uh, just, you know, real self-conscious about it. Or maybe it's just, you know, I used to donate to the school in Wyoming because, uh, you know, Little people lose their hats a lot. So anyway, that's what we're doing. Um, don't really know about baking and stuff for the holidays because we're trying to not eat the sweets and stuff. So I might bake a little bit. I know Brad's going to make monkey balls. And he's going to give those out to a couple neighbors. And I just don't know really anything else. I just, just thought I'd come on here and say hi. I hope everybody's having a good Christmas season or as good of a time as you can right now. Don't feel bad if you don't feel the ho-hos. Because a lot of people don't feel the ho-hos, and that's okay. It's a, it can, as we age, it's basically, it can be a very hard time. You know, so don't feel bad. Just, it'll be over pretty soon. Be over pretty darn soon. We did get good news today, though, from, uh, Brad's um, employment that he gets off, he does not have to come in Christmas Eve or he does not have to come in uh, New Year's Eve. So that's kind of fun. I don't know. We're thinking about maybe going out New Year's Eve just down to down to the local uh, bar pub. You know, we'll see what they got going on. Um, you know, because they do things like cornhole tossing and, and different stuff. They might have a band. It could be fun. Um, as long as it's just a couple blocks away, that could be fun. I've only been out once in my whole life on a New Year's Eve. That was maybe four or five years ago. Five, six years ago, probably. It was fun. It was fun. It was kind of a... It was at the Elf Club in Casper, and, and they fed you... And they even gave you champagne and party favors. And it was fun. It would have been a lot funner if it had been like a live band or something. But, you know, what can you say? You guys have Christmas plans? You guys have New Year's plans? Don't know yet. Yeah, it depends on Brad's back, too. So, anyway, I'm going to let you guys go because i got to get some more laundry done. But remember, I love you guys. And I do cherish your friendship so very much and I want to thank Carol and Yoshona again because I just really have been enjoying those. Brad got a kick out of those um uh plug-in uh wax warmers. He just loves them too. He just thought they're just the cutest thing ever and well made. I have to say that and I'm not a paid sponsor uh, paid they are not a paid sponsor or anything but those uh from Sensi are very well made tart warmers I have to say it. Anyway, love you guys. Cherish your friendship so much. I think you guys are awesome. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.